Good morning. Today I'm going to be uh, making a horizontal hive. I don't know uh, that I'll be able to install it with bees this year, but I'll have it ready. Uh, you can see I've got the other beehive out there. They're doing good. But what I did is I designed my own and it's going to be five foot wide. You can see here uh, by about 19 and a half with a total width of 22 and a half and by my math it's going to hold about 38 frames one of those frames being one that's a follower that's going to block the bees off so that they can come in through here and expand probably starting with a uh, a five or an eight frame uh, nuke and then they will expand from there um, considering that they'll go for a frame 19 inch frame can see right here I have my example and they will uh, they'll follow from there I'll have a little gap at the bottom with a six inch by one half inch hole that they can come through it'll latch and it will have a top that will open up but yes this is going to be my horizontal hive so this will be the video on how to make one based on this design now the design on this horizontal frame, I'm going to be using a 2 by 12 material. I'm going to be using 2 by because it's inch and a half thick, true thickness, and that is going to insulate a little better than 3 quarter, which is what most of the existing hives are, is 3 quarter. And then on the inside, I'm going to have 3 quarter material. And that's going to line the inside and then this will be just slightly less when it sits inside give it a little bit more insulation and then my frames will rest on that you can see i've got a lot of it pre-cut already this will be the legs treated so i'm about to get started here is going to be getting the side, <clears throat> sides cut down to exactly five foot. That was the plan that we had on my measurements. So I like to try and find a factory edge to measure from. Then I know that one is, is pretty close to exactly straight. And then I'm gonna cut on top of the one board and use that as the mark for the bottom board. Like I say, when I cut this at five foot, by my math, it should be enough for 38 frames one of those frames being a follower board where I can expand the hive slowly. Now that board is exactly five foot. I want to prop this up so that I don't hit the ground when I cut. That'll dull the blade really, really fast. All right, now I'm gonna check what my measurement was for the ends. Those are gonna be 19 and a half. Here's my five foot, my 19 and a half. Get these set off, let the owl protect them there. Now, my thought on the 19 and a half is that that will allow the pre-made frames to sit in perfectly. Just a tiny gap so that I can get my tools in there, kind of play around with stuff. But again, let's go from a factory edge.
and I'm going to mark 19 and a half. Get my perfectly straight line, making sure that this rests against this edge. I always go twice because sometimes that soaks up a lot of the ink. All right, make sure all the edges are perfectly aligned. Then we'll make this cut and I'll get ready for the next portion. Remembering again to keep boards underneath this so it doesn't touch the grass or the ground and hit rocks and dull up the blade. But you can see how when I have a good blade and I cut them on top of one another, it marks the one underneath it. Saves a little bit of time in marking. Not necessary, but it's something that I like to do. All right, next I'll be assembling the sides together. All right, next order of business is gonna be putting these two frames together to make the box. And then we're gonna cut, double check the uh, the size of that interior three-quarter inch board that this frame will rest on. So first order of business putting these together. I like to use these kind of screws as a cabinet screw, but they're good for treated lumber and for outside use. So I like to use these. They just have a little bit more grab uh, than just a Phillips head and they don't seem to strip out. I just, I tend to like those a little bit better. So, first order of business. Get this box. And they're gonna sit together just like this. And I have these kind of pre-drilled from a previous project. I want to make sure that these line up perfectly. The tops of both sides. Now there's a little bit of warp in it, but that's okay. These screws are going to take that out. Still just making sure that everything's lining up. I'd like to have about six or seven of these per side. These screws. Draw this in. You never do find perfect lumber, do you? All right. I'm gonna add another one just for good measure. That corner doesn't feel solid yet. This way I can kind of lean on it a little bit and help out until the screws are holding it in place. These are two and a half inch. Thank you. 
every step of the way I'm trying to square stuff up just a little bit more. The more I square it up, I can pull it into place. I'll show you how I do that. This edge is off. I'll just pull it into place. Now it's way off down here, but when I pull it, everything will be square. Like I say, there's no perfect lumber. I tried to get the best ones I could, but sometimes when you shop big box, you get what you get. Some of that wood might have sat on the shelves for quite a while. Now, we're going to cut our three-quarter board that'll go in the inside, but I want to do a double check just to make sure that all my measurements were right in the plans. We're right at exactly 57 inches. Exactly 57 inches, so things are going pretty according to plan right now. Just use this as a makeshift workbench here for a minute. Line these two up. gonna drop right in all right I'm gonna get those attached and then I'll come back uh, to measure the bottom make sure that that's perfect okay I've set everything on edge I'm actually gonna use a concrete backer board it's water it's waterproof um, this is a concrete backer board screw it takes a little bit different head but it's a little shorter I don't want two and a half inch going through here because it'll stick through and I'll have to grind down a lot of screw heads and that would not be fun but I still like to use screws because they just don't back out like nails would I want this to be fairly permanent and I'm gonna let it sink in a little bit so I don't hit anything when I'm running my frames across and Gonna put them about every foot. Make sure that everything's nice and secure. Checking the bottom edge, just make sure it's flush. I want it all to be the same. And my thought here too is that the bees are gonna put wax and propolis and all kinds of stuff to seal it up. They're going to basically glue it together for me. I've watched some videos where the guys use wood glue. I try to use as little chemical as I can. I know a lot of the uh, water-based wood glues are just fine. But for me, I'd rather them not get into it. Eat anything they're not supposed to. You, now, you might have seen the board lift up there for a second. If that ever happens to you, you can just back it out. The board will flop back down, and then you can drive it home. 
Now I'm gonna flip this. Get the other board in position. Make sure that they're both gonna go to the back here. You don't wanna make that mistake. You have to take it apart and redo it. Again, really sink those in. That's what these screws are designed for. If you're doing flooring, bathroom tile, putting concrete board in, you don't want it flopping around. You don't want your uh, float to hit any screw heads. So these kind of countersink for you. I like that idea. My frame should just float along this perfectly. All right, and we talked about best laid plans. Sometimes you find when you, you do really nice measurements, do a great plan, sometimes it doesn't work out in the real world. So we're gonna flip this upside down when we get ready to cut the, the plywood bottom. And I believe I'm gonna double that up as well. Again, for insulation, I want these bees to be able to winter here in Michigan without dying. We're gonna call it 22 and 5 8 Check this side, 22 and 5 8 by five foot exactly. No surprise there on that. So, here's our board. I'm gonna cut two 22 and 5 8 Now this is a uh, 48 inch board, four feet. So I will be able to get two at 22 and 5 8 by five foot. Again, we've got a perfect workbench here right now. I'm actually gonna pop a line on this, a masonry line, a chalk line. For those of you who aren't familiar with that. And then I'll use the one that I cut perfectly to be my template. Here's my mark, it's 60 inches. All right, I will come back when I have these two cut. Okay, I have the boards all cut, but I actually, I made a decision while I was doing this, and I think this is a pretty good idea. I'm gonna leave the one side that I cut long, and the bees will be able to use that for their landing. Now this is gonna be the same idea that I taught you before. We're gonna perfectly line up one side, attach it all the way down. Have this perfectly lined up. Straight along this edge, and then if the box is crooked at all, because we know we have straight factory edges, we can just pull it into place. Now, it is going a little bit off, but not too bad. So we'll just pull it into place. Tack it down here. And now it's perfectly square. Um, you use that trick in framing walls when you're building houses too. Got to make sure that your cut was straight or you're using a factory edge though. Uh, you don't want to get a house crooked, that's for sure. Uh, 
Okay. I'm still going to use the other piece because like I said, I want inch and a half all the way around. Michigan winters can get pretty harsh. 19, 20 below. We had 40 below a couple years ago. I use a pond heater in the pond for my koi and I actually lost several of them that year. Something spooked them and they went to a shallower end of the pool and they didn't make it through the winter. So I want this to be as warm as possible for them. Something that they can really use that propolis to seal up. But you can see they're gonna have a landing now for when I cut my half inch by six inch channel for them. All right, so I'm gonna get this all screwed together, flip it back over, and uh, I'll show you how everything's supposed to start working from there, especially with the frames. We're uh, getting to the fun part now.